I got fired for joking about a drawing at work. Turns out it was the boss's disabled daughter's artwork. Now we're friends. I got fired for unintentionally being rude to the company owner's disabled daughter. This happened on Friday. I've been feeling down all weekend, dreading the thought of having to start searching for a new job. Explaining why I got fired from my old job is going to be fun. I'm typing it up here to try and organize my thoughts in my head, because right now, it's all a mess. I had been with the company for three months and was still on orientation. My job was sales, advertising. As the new guy, I was given existing accounts to manage, which consisted of providing customer service and convincing my clients to spend more money on advertising. All of these accounts already had their ad campaigns done, and if they wanted something new, the account was transferred to a senior account manager who would work with our advertising guys to put something together for the customer. Eventually, I hoped to have that job, but I had to pay my dues by proving I could maintain existing accounts and convince them to spend more money first. Everything was going great, until last week, when we were scheduled to have our quarterly retreat. Since we were the main regional office in the area, all of the employees from the satellite locations came to our office for the retreat. The owner of the company rarely visits our office. He's been overseeing the setup of a new satellite office for the last year, according to my co-workers. But he was there for the retreat, as was his disabled daughter Amy. Not her real name for the sake of privacy. One of my co-workers told me Amy works at one of the satellite offices and I probably wouldn't have much interaction with her. But I should be nice. That seemed like a no-brainer. I'm nice to everyone regardless. I won't claim to be an expert on Amy's disability, but it seemed like she had childlike mannerisms and struggled with expressing herself. She also had some problem with motor skills. I'll describe the only interaction I had with her prior to the incident. I went to refill my coffee and Amy was in front of me, getting her coffee. I watched her struggle with getting condiments added and putting the lid on, so I politely asked if she needed any help. She thanked me, said she did, and let me finish making it. While I was making it, she said she hated coffee, but her dad made her drink it because she had to, in a loud voice, always alert. I smiled said that was definitely important and handed her the cup. She thanked me again and went back to the office her dad was using, where she had been most of the day. I felt like I had been a good Samaritan and went on my way. Most of the retreat is team building exercises. Prior to the incident, Amy only participated in the puzzle race, where groups put puzzles together without the box art to see which team can finish faster. Amy wasn't in my group, so I didn't have any interaction with her there. Neither of our teams won. The big event and the one that everyone seemed the most excited for was the last activity of the day. Our boss gave us a list of potential clients. We were supposed to select three as a group and put together something to attract the customer. We were told we would be judged on our creativity. My group explained that we could do pictures, slogans, jingles, whatever we wanted. Each person expected to work on one individually, then work with their group to polish it up before it was presented to everyone. It was kind of a big deal because at previous retreats, there would be clients on the list the owner was already close to bringing on board. And if you impress the owner, you might just land that account. I went with a jingle, rhymed a few words, and recorded it. It was silly but fit the brand. My group gave me some pointers, we made some improvements, and I recorded the final product for submission. I helped my team with their projects until it was time to turn everything in. After everything was turned in, we gathered in the big conference room to critique each other. The owner went through them one by one. If it was a picture or storyboard, he'd put it up, read it, and we'd make comments, good or bad. There were some that were great which drew a lot of compliments, and some that were really bad which we laughed about as a group. You could tell the senior account managers didn't care much about the exercise or put much effort into their pitches. Nobody seemed to get upset or offended, regardless of the feedback. When my jingle was played, it got a lot of comments, not all of them good, and I took the feedback with a smile. After getting my feedback, I felt a little more comfortable about sharing my thoughts on other presentations. I gave what I thought was valuable feedback to a few products, laughed at a couple others, and then a rather crude drawing was put up for the exact same company I had chosen. I immediately joked that, well at least my jingle was better than that. Did a three-year-old draw it? And laughed, to absolute silence. I was really confused because plenty of people had made jokes and everyone laughed. Instead, a few people looked at my like I was disgusting, and the owner said, well if you don't have anything nice to say, keep it yourself maybe. Then my boss scooted down to where I was sitting, and told me I needed to go to my desk. Now, I noticed as I was gathering my things that the owner's daughter was red-faced and starting to tear up. The team-building exercise was over for me. I went back to my desk, and it began to sink in that the drawing must have been drawn by the owner's daughter. There was no warning or anything. The owner didn't reveal who put together what we were looking at until after a few critiques. Maybe I should have known. Everyone was joking and having fun up to that point. Someone else had a pretty bad drawing that got laughed at. Either way, I felt awful. As soon as the event was over I approached my boss to apologize. He told me to wait for him in his office. 
Long story short, I was fired. My boss said since I was still on orientation, he had decided I wasn't a good fit for the company, so it was better to let me go now. He didn't outright say I was being fired for making fun of her drawing, but that's literally the only thing that I've ever gotten in trouble for. My work, up until that point, had been praised. I didn't get much time to process it, because my boss had already called security, who showed up fairly quickly, and escorted me to my desk to gather my things before escorting me out of the building. An hour later, I got a call from one of my former teammates, who asked if I wanted to join the team for a drink one last time. They needed it after the retreat, and felt bad that they didn't warn me. I wasn't feeling up for it, but I wanted to try and make sense of the whole situation, so I went to the bar. In the back of my mind I was thinking that since I'm about to start looking for a new job, a few references from former co-workers wouldn't be bad, since I definitely won't be getting one from my boss or the owner of the company after everything that happened. The team explained that Amy comes to all of these retreats, and she always does some crude drawing like that. Everyone just sort of knows to say nice things about it and move on. One of my teammates said that once you've seen one of her drawings, you know what to look for. Well, I didn't, and nobody warned me. I started to get pretty upset that this was a known thing and everyone knew but me, but what could I do? I had already fucked up and it cost me my job. The team also shared more about Amy. Apparently she works at one of the satellite offices but doesn't really do anything. The people in charge of the office try to come up with stuff for her to do because she gets upset when she's bored. The team said the way the people who worked there described it, they were basically her babysitter, so she wouldn't bother her dad all day when he spent most of his time there. And after he moved on to establish the new satellite office, he didn't take Amy with him because she liked all the friends she had at that office. They also said that her dad had harassed a few single guys at the office to take her on dates, which seemed pretty damn HR inappropriate, but he does own the company. My team said Amy desperately wants a boyfriend and wants to get married, which she talks about all the time. The consensus seemed to be that there's no way she actually understands how relationships or marriage works, and her dad probably put this idea in her head to begin with. One of my teammates did joke that it wasn't a bad deal, because whoever married her would inherit the company, since she is the old man's only kid. I wasn't really in the mood for jokes at that point after losing my job over one, so I told them I needed to go. The only good thing is my former team members did say they would gladly give me a reference if I needed it, since they felt so bad about not telling me about the Amy situation to begin with. Oh, and the cherry on top. Amy sent me a Facebook friend request over the weekend. I haven't accepted it. I already upset her and it cost me my job. Part of me wants to accept it, apologize and block her, but I'm not sure I'm ready for that either. I'm going to take a few days to get myself together and then get my resume out there. Edit after reading all of the replies, including quite a few DMs, and talking with a close friend. I've decided that I'm going to accept the friend request. I'll do an update if there's any sort of conversation. I plan to open with an apology. If she replies, great. If she doesn't, then at least I will have a clear conscious knowing I've done the right thing. Update if you saw my first post, you know that I got fired because I accidentally made a joke at the expense of the company owner's disabled daughter, Amy. During the last team building event of the day, we were pitching ideas for accounts, which included everything from jingles, my pitch, to storyboards, to slogans, to drawings. A lot of senior account managers were phoning it in and people were making jokes about their work, which had a lot of people laughing. I got some jokes about my pitch and got a little overconfident, so when a crude drawing went up for the same account I did my jingle for, I made a joke about it. The joke was, well at least my jingle was better than that. Did a three-year-old draw it? My joke was met with stone-cold silence and a very negative reaction from the owner of the company. What my co-workers had failed to tell me was that Amy usually submits a crude drawing, which is a lot of work for her due to her issues, and everyone knows to say a few nice things and move on. I was new and wasn't informed, so my ignorance and inappropriate response cost me my job. After meeting with my team at a bar to begin the process of drowning my sorrows, I got a friend request from Amy on Facebook. That brings us the to the update. First of all, thank you to everyone who made me laugh. The first time someone joked about me accepting the friend request, marrying Amy, and taking my revenge by inheriting the company made me uncomfortable. By the third time I saw it mentioned, I couldn't help but laugh. A lot of you gave me good advice. I appreciate those who talked about legal action and what options I had. Unfortunately, I was still on orientation with my company, which is like a probationary period. During that time, they can let me go for any reason. They could fire me for wearing the wrong color socks if they wanted. I had to sign an agreement to get employed which stated I understood this. There's literally nothing I can do, legally. At the end of the day I decided to go have some drinks with a good friend, talk things out and see what he would do. Dave's been my best friend since we were in elementary school. We've probably spent more time together than some actual brothers. 
Dave was firmly on the side of accept the friend request, apologize, and clear your conscious man. I'm getting us another round of shots. He knows me better than anyone, and he knows that the guilt would eat me alive. I posted it here because it bothered me. I decided to take his advice, and everyone here who pushed me for that as well, especially the ones that DM'd me. So that's what I did. I accepted the friend request. I immediately messaged Amy. I said I shouldn't have made that joke about anyone's work. It was unprofessional, and I was sorry. It took her a while to respond, but when she finally did, she thanked me for my apology, but said she sent me the request because she wanted to apologize since I lost my job over it. I said she didn't owe me an apology, and there was another long pause before she asked if she could copy-paste something to me. I wasn't sure what it was, but said she could. She pasted a generic message, but one she had clearly spent some time on. I don't want to type it word for word, but I'll paraphrase. Hi, my name is Amy. Please forgive me if I'm slow to respond to you. I suffered a brain injury when I was a little girl, and it takes me a while to type things out. There was more to it, but that's the basic stuff. I responded, saying it was not a problem, and she could take all the time she needed. Amy and I ended up messaging back and forth until almost 3 a.m. No, we didn't fall in love. We aren't going on a date. I'm not going to marry her for revenge so I can take her dad's company. However, I do think I would like to be friends with her. Not because I feel bad for her, but because she's a genuinely nice person and honestly, everyone could use a few friends like that. We spent a lot of time talking about her. That's just the direction it went, so I asked questions since she seemed comfortable talking about it. Amy was in a car accident when she was a kid. She was in the car with her mom, and they were hit by a drunk driver, coming back from a birthday party for one of her classmates. Her mom didn't make it, and Amy suffered a brain injury that impacts her motor skills, because it makes it difficult for her to speak and do simple things like getting dressed, making coffee, etc. People assume she's mentally challenged. She was put in special ed because of it, but worked really hard and graduated from high school. She even wanted to go to college, but her dad didn't think it was a good idea. Her life has been difficult because it's hard for her to communicate with people. By the time she can get a fully formed sentence out, the conversation is over. She can type, slowly, but most people don't want to type when they're face to face. She even admitted that when she's not at work, she will sometimes carry a tablet and pretend she's mute, because that's just easier. We eventually circled back to the drawing and to it. She wasn't that offended by my response, because she assumed I didn't know. She got upset primarily, because she knew all hell was about to break loose and she had no way to communicate with anyone. She was so upset when she found out I got fired and tried to talk to her dad, but he wouldn't listen to her. She's fully aware that a lot of people at the company just pretend to be nice to her because she's the owner's daughter. But she does have a few friends at the satellite office where she works who better understand her disability. She gets frustrated because she can't truly contribute anything, but is happy when they are able to find busy work for her to do. It might take her all day to do something another person could do in a couple of hours, but it's better than sitting around bored all day. She knows she's a burden and a bother to her dad when he's around, but he's her dad and she loves him. She wishes every single day she was a daughter he could be proud of, rather than a burden. She tries talking to him via emails and text messages, but he usually doesn't respond. If they're in the same location, he'll just walk over and respond verbally, which is frustrating. Because it becomes a one-sided discussion with her unable to do anything but give simple one-word answers, like yes or no. She also thanked me again for helping with her coffee. She said that when she was younger, she tried to do everything by herself and would get mad when people helped her. But now she's learned to appreciate the few who do. Most just stand there and look away, pretending to patiently wait for her to do it on her own. It was getting late for both of us at that point, really late. It takes her a long time to respond to messages. There's misspellings. I get why someone would assume she's mentally challenged. I myself referred to her in my first post as having childlike mannerisms, which was a misunderstanding on my part. When she tries to force words quickly or emphasize something, she gets really loud, which makes her sound like an excited toddler rather than an adult trying to have a conversation. We ended our talk last night agreeing to talk again sometime. She asked if I had watched the episode of House of Dragon yet, which I have, and she asked if I'd like to talk about it after she watches it. I told her I'd love to. So that's it. That's the update. Sorry to those who expected me to steal her dad's company. I'm definitely not doing that. Talking to Amy did make me feel a lot better though. I don't know how I'm going to handle the whole firing thing at my next interview. But a few of you suggested I just leave a gap on my resume, and I may just do that. I doubt there will be any future updates, but at least this has a happier ending than my first post. I had an affair, got pregnant, and now my ex's wife wants to involve my son in their family drama. I had a child from an affair, and now his wife is contacting me. I feel so foolish. I'm a 26-year-old woman, and a few years back, I had an affair with a 42-year-old married man. 
I had no clue he was married when we first met and hooked up. I obviously looked him up on social media and while he did have photos of his kids on there, there was absolutely no mention or photos of a wife at all. I found out that he was married about a month after we first got together. But he told me it was just a marriage on paper and that they basically lived separate lives and agreed to remain married for practical purposes until the kids were older. They owned a business, which she really ran and he was just financially involved in. I knew at the time that I probably shouldn't believe him, but I convinced myself it was true. I was in my early 20s and so attracted to him and I guess almost infatuated with him. He made me feel so good. I know now that I should have ended it immediately, but I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. I was addicted to all of the attention he gave me, the great sex, the places he'd take me. I felt special. I was so naive. I got pregnant about a year into seeing him. I had always been so careful with preventing pregnancy, but during my relationship with him, I took stupid risks. I was so high in lust with this guy, it's embarrassing. The things he'd asked me to do, I'd say yes to almost anything, even when I knew it was a bad idea. I was in love with him, or I thought I was. I hadn't intentionally wanted to get pregnant. I would of course dream about being his wife and having a family, but I knew that wouldn't be a possibility while he had this arrangement with his actual wife. I didn't get pregnant on purpose with any intention of him leaving her for me. Even if I wished that we could be a real, normal couple. I was surprised by how excited I was to be pregnant with his baby. I wanted that baby once I found out I was pregnant. The thought of carrying this baby of the man I loved was so special to me but I knew he probably wouldn't feel the same. I told him I was pregnant, and he told me I couldn't keep the baby. I expected his reaction, but I was devastated, and it hurt me to my core that he didn't feel the same way I did. He offered to pay, to make a whole weekend of it somewhere exciting, what the F, and to buy me something special if I'd just please get rid of the baby. He explained that he didn't want any more kids and that he couldn't openly be a father to another kid when he and his wife were still pretending to be happily married to the outside world. I agreed to do what he wanted, and we made plans for him to pick me up and find somewhere out of town to go get it done. I was all packed the night he was going to pick me up, but I started to feel really scared and really unsafe about the whole thing. I took my bag and checked myself into a hotel to hide because I couldn't go with him. I texted him to say I promised to never contact him again and to never name him as the father or go after child support if he'd promised to leave me alone. At first, he tried to sweet-talk me into doing what he wanted. When I didn't cave in, he said some very nasty things to me and that I essentially better never contact him again or show up at his door. I have a two-year-old now. At times, it's been difficult, but overall we are thriving as best we can. I have kept my word about not naming him as the father or requesting child support. His wife contacted me on social media. Well, she's his ex-wife now. She wants to talk to me. She found out about me and told me that she divorced him six months ago. She wants her children to know their siblings and for my child to know his siblings. That's weird to me. I haven't responded back to her yet. I am unsure about how to approach this. How do I respond to this? I wonder if I'm being selfish by not exploring an option for my child to know his siblings, if she's being genuine about that. If I was married and my husband fathered a child outside of our marriage, I don't think I'd feel the same that she does. Relevant comments comment one I didn't know he was married when we first got together. I acknowledge that I should have ended the relationship as soon as I found out he was married. I allowed myself to believe what he told me, which made it seem not so bad. Like this was some sort of agreement he and his wife had. Emotionally, I was already hooked. I'm not making excuses. I wouldn't say I was happy to bring a baby into this situation. There was a huge mix of emotions. I felt like I was in love with him, so there was a part of me that was excited at first. That feeling soon died, but I still felt that I loved my baby still. I tried to do the best thing that I could, which was to remove myself from his life and his family's life. I just wanted to be able to keep my baby and love my baby. I did not get pregnant on purpose. I wasn't on birth control. I had been on birth control when I was slightly younger and had life-threatening health complications as a result. He knew I wasn't on birth control. He loved unprotected sex. I was stupid and I agreed to do it. I would do almost anything he asked sexually. I tried to track my cycle and would tell him when it was probably not a safe time to do it. His wife isn't really what I'm afraid of. Whatever she'd want to say to me is probably deserved anyway, and more. Comment 2. He found out about the pregnancy before I ghosted him. And upon finding out I was pregnant with his child, there was absolutely no real discussion about what we were going to do. We were going to do what he wanted to do and he had it all planned out. He threatened me by text and by phone calls and voicemails when I told him I was not going to go with him on this abortion vacation he had planned. I begged him to please not force me to do that and he turned mean. I offered to never contact him again if he'd just let me go. After threatening me again about what he'd do if I didn't keep my word, he agreed. He has kept his side of the bargain and has never contacted me. Comment 3. I've been assuming that she found out about me on her own, maybe saw something on his phone or computer, and has probably known for a while before reaching out to me. If it's actually her. I get what some people are saying about siblings and such, but that man is not my child's dad. He is the dad of his older kids, but he's not the dad of my kid. I'm still young and I hope to have more children one day. 
and those children would be my son's siblings. I hope to find a man who loves me and my son and with whom I can have a legitimate relationship. I haven't been with another man since I ended things with this guy. I actually just went on two dates for the first time very recently. I'm not desperate to find a man right now, but I hope to find real love one day. Those people are not my son's family. He's two and they're old enough to drive, so I don't think they're missing out on any sort of important relationship right now. I understand wanting to know your bio family and I feel he can decide that later on when he's old enough to have a day. Depending on where we are in our lives at the time, he might not feel a need to know those people. I don't plan to lie to my son about his conception but I don't think we need to involve ourselves with the man's ex-wife and teenage children at this time. Update 1, I made a post three weeks ago and things have only gotten stranger. I had an affair with a married man a few years ago. I regret it and I will never do anything like that ever again. I knew it was wrong from the very beginning, but he captivated me. I was naive. I allowed myself to believe when he told me they were pretty much just married on paper for the sake of their kids. I got pregnant and while he tried to talk me into getting an abortion, I ultimately decided to keep the baby. I have a two-year-old little boy now. I promised this man that I wouldn't expose our affair and I wouldn't formally identify him as the father or request child support. I did that because he was becoming very nasty about the whole thing and I felt like due to the mess that I had created and the way I felt by the end of it, a clean break with no involvement with him would be the best thing for everyone. I moved back to where my family is, hundreds of miles from where he and his family live. About a month ago, his ex-wife reached out to me via social media claiming they had been divorced for six months and that she wanted our children to be able to know each other. Now their kids are teenagers, so I didn't really think they'd want anything to do with the toddler and the woman their father was having an affair with. It seemed odd to me. After posting here, I sort of decided that I wouldn't respond to her. I'd just ignore it. She just sent me one message, so it wasn't as if she was badgering me about talking to me or meeting me. On Friday night, I decided to message her. I don't really know why. I think it was really just for my sake so I could have the chance to apologize to her. I told her that I would be more comfortable speaking with her face to face since I couldn't trust that it was really her. She said she understood. I was too nervous to meet her in person, but we did a video chat. I didn't know what to expect if this was all a ploy just to unleash her fury on me or what. I mean, I deserve that. She wouldn't be wrong to feel that way. It was really her. She told me she discovered our affair when she found communications between the two of us after our relationship had ended. She told me I'm one of many women he had affairs with over the years, and she knew about somebody even before he met me, but she didn't divorce him at the time. Finding out about my child was the final straw for her. I told her I was sorry for my relationship with her husband and admitted that I knew he was married. She graciously told me she forgives me, and that while she harbored a lot of anger towards me initially, she ultimately blames her husband. I'm not blameless, but she chooses to not hate me, essentially. She said she couldn't have said this six months ago or a year ago when she first found out about me, but she has moved past that. She still has anger toward him, in addition to many other emotions surrounding him. She started pouring out her heart to me about their 20-plus year marriage and life together, and it was very awkward because what do I even say? Her kids know about me and my son. She says they're very mad at their father. Somehow I don't think they're mad about the fact that he's not involved with my son's life. And why would they be mad about that? I would hate myself if I were them. I told her that with my son being so little right now, I don't really feel comfortable with him meeting her kids or being involved with their family. I feel unsure about it and it's just not something I feel needs to happen right now. Then she told me her ex-husband was in a bad accident two months ago. He's fine now, still not allowed to return to all his normal activities just yet, but will be fine. He is probably the most physically active person I've ever met barely ever seems to sit down, so he must be terribly annoying to be around if he's not allowed to go 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 all the time. She told me he wants to meet my son. Apparently, she moved back in with him temporarily when he first came home from the hospital. She said the accident really shook him up and he has been expressing a lot of regret about my son, not being involved, not providing for him. So now it's like was everything she said just a lie and he somehow got her to reach out to me on his behalf. And she actually did it? It felt almost like a relief talking to her initially, but then it's like, was any of that true or you were just trying to be his messenger? I don't even know if that part is true now. Why wouldn't he just contact me himself? I'm just feeling so uneasy about the whole thing now. Relevant comments comment one, I don't believe I have to involve his teenage children in my son's life. Maybe when my son is old enough to decide if he wants that. He is not named on the birth certificate and I do not receive child support from him. I have asked nothing of him, except to let me move away and not try to force me to have an abortion. I basically had to promise him to not contact him, not make him as the father, not request child support. If he truly wants involvement with my son, he can reach out to me directly and he can take the legal route to establish himself as our son's father. Comment two, he did not legally sever his rights. He never established rights in the first place. He has no rights until he goes to court and establishes himself as the father. He is welcome to do that. 
Honestly, I wish my son did have a father who was involved in his life and loved him. Yes, this guy has faults, but he has plenty of positive qualities. He is really involved with his older children. I met them many times because they'd be at work with him or he'd have to drop by the office on his way to take them somewhere. He was always doing things with them. They seemed like good kids who really loved their dad. I wish my son could have that experience too. I didn't think it was an option based on how he behaved when I was pregnant. He wasn't interested and wanted me and our baby to go away. That's what I did and I accepted it. Comment 3. He is not legally my son's father at this time. This means that currently he has no legal parental rights or responsibilities regarding my son. I cannot stop him from taking the legal steps to establish paternity if he wishes to do so. He will always be my son's biological father. I can't change that fact. Regardless of whether or not he ever legally establishes paternity, my son will likely be curious about his biological father and who knows. Maybe they will establish a relationship one day regardless of legal paternity. There is no way to say if I will meet a man who may want to adopt my son one day thus becoming his legal father. It's something that I think would be nice, but nothing that I'm intent on doing. By choice, I've only been on two dates since my son was born, and that was only within the year 2024. I realize that it will not be as simple as signing a piece of paper. Update 2 I posted about this a few months ago. To summarize very quickly, when I was fresh out of college, I had an affair with a married man and father. I became pregnant. He wanted me to get an abortion. He had arranged to take me away on a vacation to get an abortion. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I agreed to go along with what we wanted. At the last minute, when he was on his way to come pick me up, I told him I couldn't go through with the abortion. I just really didn't feel comfortable about his plan and how he was orchestrating everything. It scared me. I realized at that time how deep I had gone with this mistake, how screwed up the whole relationship was. He was really mad. He threatened me, said a lot of nasty things to me. I told him if he just left me alone and let me have my baby, then I'd leave him alone and wouldn't name him as the father or seek child support. I moved back home. I was living in a different state when I met him. I kept my word and I didn't name him as the father or seek to establish paternity. I have never sought child support. My child is two now. A few months ago, his wife contacted me via social media. At first, she made it seem like she wanted my child to have the opportunity to know his siblings. It was sort of weird since the siblings are teenagers. She said she had divorced him six months prior. I agreed to talk to her virtually, not in person. I felt that I owed it to her to apologize for what I had done. I do feel bad about it. But at the end of the conversation, I told her that I didn't feel it was the appropriate time to connect my son with her kids. He's a toddler and in their teens, Plus, I had promised her husband to stay out of his life. That's when she told me that he was recently in a bad accident and she had been helping to take care of him. Supposedly, he was going to be fine and was fairly recovered at that point. But she said he had expressed interest to meet our child. So she was basically his messenger. I have not been in contact with her since then. I deleted my social media. I don't know why, but the whole thing just really made me uncomfortable since I last posted here. Then I received a handwritten letter from him. In it, he expressed how he wanted to get to know our son. He wants to be a father to our son. He wants to provide financially for him. He'd like us to come visit him. He asked me to sign a paternity affidavit. I refused to do so. I know he is my son's father, but I'm not going to make this that easy for him. After the things he said to me and threatened me with, he at least has to work for this. At that point, my parents felt that we needed to meet with a lawyer. All communication from me has gone through a lawyer. I have never responded to him personally, Ash directly. Now I have a court order for paternity. I have to present my son to have a specimen taken tomorrow. I already know what it's going to say. It's not that I don't want my son to have a dad in his life. It's just the whole situation is a mess, and he lives a few states away from me. I don't know what to do. I can't really do anything. He's doing things legally. Next, I'm sure he'll petition for some form of custody or visitation. He's not married anymore, supposedly, but he's a lot more established than I am. He has considerably more financial resources. I also know he has all sorts of connections where he lives. Luckily, they don't hold as much weight here in my state, but it's still so scary to me. I'm a bad mom. I brought my son into this world knowing it was a messy situation. I just got so comfortable with it just being the two of us and now I don't want to give that up. Relevant comments OP on if the father would be moving closer to her and her son now that he's divorced from his ex-wife. OP answer, to touch on just a few things. I don't think he'll move away from where he lives. He is way too much established there. He's in his early 40s. I don't know how this supposed accident, if that even really happened, has affected him, but he was incredibly physically active when I knew him. He only slept like four hours a night, took a 20-minute power nap daily, and rarely ever sat down. He was also highly involved in his children's lives. I'd even say overprotective, like a helicopter dad instead of the typical helicopter mom. Careless underscore welder underscore 4048. How did he have time to cheat? OP answer. He only slept a few hours a night and moved at about a million miles a minute. Everyone joked about it. Somehow he always had time to get up at 5 a.m., go surfing, do some work, take his kids to school, 
do some work, take his power nap, get coffee, pick his kids up after school and take them wakeboarding or some other sort of thing like that, do some more work, be at his kid's basketball game, and so on and so forth. He literally never ever stopped. I was just another thing to help fill out his calendar to prevent him from getting bored. OP on the father's relationship with his ex-wife and their children. OP answer. I also don't think he and his wife had much of a relationship, although it wasn't quite as he described it to me. They lived in the same house, but I believe they lived pretty separate lives. He bought her a business to give her something to do and keep her busy. She was there most of the time. They didn't even go to their kids' activities together. He was always the one going. So I think that freed up time, too. I don't think they liked being around each other, so she was happy to have him out of the house. She admitted to me that I wasn't the first affair he had and she knew about most of the time we were together. Another update on how stupid I am, or I had a baby as a result of an affair, and now his wife is reaching out to me. I won't rehash the whole thing here. My previous posts are on my profile. I got pregnant from an affair with a married guy. He wanted me to have an abortion. I decided I didn't want one. He turned mean, I promised to not name him as the father, legally, or to pursue any sort of child support. I moved away from where he and his family were located. I'm about 12 hours away from him now, back where my family is from. I haven't reached out to him in over three years since. His ex-wife reached out, out to me out of the blue via social media, initially claiming she wanted to connect with me, so that our kids could know each other. When I politely declined for the time being, as her kids are teenagers and my son is a toddler, and we live states apart. She revealed she was really reaching out on behalf of her ex-husband, who had supposedly had a change of heart about being involved in our child's life after nearly dying in an accident. I did not engage with her any further after that. It all made me feel very uncomfortable. Later, I received a letter from him in the mail. He asked to be involved with our son, to provide for him, etc. It still felt weird. I mean, he turned really mean and didn't want anything to do with me or our baby, and hadn't made any attempt to contact me in years, and I was not hiding. His wife was obviously able to find me on social media, and you can find my address online. I felt like if he was serious, he'd take the steps to establish paternity legally. And that's what he did. Around 1.5 months ago, we were ordered to submit DNA samples for a paternity test. It took around five weeks to find out what I already knew it say. But now things are stalled for another several weeks for the next step in the court process. I haven't talked to him at all during this whole thing. I didn't respond directly to his letter. I do have a lawyer and everything is basically going through him now. Then without any warning, he just showed up at my home last weekend. Just knocked on the door like it was nothing. Basically, this is his son and he doesn't want to wait another six weeks for the court to inevitably order us into some sort of custody mediation anyway. His words. Why can't I just talk to him? I told him he made me uncomfortable and him just showing up at my house really made me uncomfortable. Honestly, I don't know what made me so uncomfortable. The fact that he showed up unannounced like that, or the fact that I instantly felt the same attraction to him that I had when I was with him, and I didn't want to feel that at all. In some weird way, part of me felt happy to see him, and then another part of me was disgusted that I was happy. He said he doesn't understand why we can't just talk about this. He's not trying to take my son away from me. He just wants to be involved in his life and to help provide for him like he should have been all along. He's sorry he wasn't there when he was born. He's sorry he reacted the way that he did when I didn't go along with his plans to take me on an abortion vacation. Why can't I believe that he just wants to be a dad to his kid? I guess I agree with him. Why can't I just accept that he has had a change of heart? I can't trust myself. I can't trust my own judgment. I feel like if I easily let him into my son's life, I'm going to end up regretting it and be made a fool of somehow. I've already made so many mistakes when it comes to him. He says it's stupid of me to not try to work it out amongst ourselves first. I'm giving so much control to the court. I don't know whether to believe that or to think it's just his way of convincing me to do what he wants. I know he will get some sort of visitation and eventual custody. Maybe it would be better if we try to come to an agreement, but he had the ability to sway me so easily. I'm so stupid when it comes to him. Nobody else has ever made me feel so foolish in my life. I want my son to have a dad. I admit it's probably selfish of me to want to keep him away. I just keep imagining having to spend weeks or months apart from my child while he's living with his dad 12 hours away, and I can't stand the thought of it. I'm just feeling sad, stupid, and defeated. Relevant comments OP on if the father is actually divorced from his wife. OP answer. I checked the county records and they did actually get divorced. Mammoth underscore my 8171. At this point, you need to trust your lawyer. Hopefully he is a good one. Make sure that your lawyer has all the facts, including how poorly he treated you when he found out you were pregnant. Do not communicate any more with your ex, especially since you know that you're incapable of making good decisions when he is involved. You may need to prepare yourself mentally that your ex is eventually going to play a role in your kid's life, as much as that sucks. Hopefully you can go after him for back child support. OP answer. 
My lawyer has any and all information that I possibly had to share. I am already preparing myself that he will likely have a role in my child's life. I mean, the change will be difficult for me and I honestly don't want anything to change. But I'm trying to focus on any shred of positive outcome this could have for my son. He deserves a dad. I wish it wasn't in this situation. I wish I had given him two loving parents in a stable relationship, the ideal. I wish I had at least given him a father who didn't live states away. I feel bad that my son has two lying cheaters for parents. I truly do feel so embarrassed about our behavior in a new way I did before, ever since my son was born. Other than that whole thing and the fact that he's apparently had affairs with multiple women according to his ex-wife, he actually seems like a good dad to his teenage kids. He was always very involved with them. I guess I'm just trying to cling to whatever positive things I can think of. He can also provide a lot more financially than I currently can. That's scary for me because I'm already turning it into some sort of competition between us in my head. Several points for him, none for me. Plus my son is also very shy. He doesn't do well if me or one of my parents isn't there with him. I'm just now getting him involved in more activities with other kids and safe, trusted adults, but he still just clings to me. My heart breaks when I think of him meeting a strange man he doesn't know and me not being there. I want to be there. Plus, I think that's how things normally go for him. And to be perfectly honest, that's how I used to be for him, too. Just go along with what he wants. He was obviously expecting me when he showed up in person. He genuinely seemed surprised I didn't cave into his request right on the spot. The previous version of me probably would have. OP on how the father managed to find her address OP answer. He sent me a letter in the mail previously. I googled myself and my address came up easily. Admittedly, I made no effort to hide myself after moving away. I didn't think I needed to. He had no interest in being involved with our baby and I promised to never contact him again. So I thought that was the end of it. His ex-wife told me he was in a bad accident when I talked to her. It's not too surprising based on his hobbies. He lives at like 200 miles per minute. According to her, she had to move back into their house to take care of him while he recovered. When he showed up here, he didn't look like somebody who had been in a life-threatening accident not too terribly long ago. He told me he's fully recovered and although he'll probably have back issues the rest of his life, he's perfectly fine. Ope a having a visitation plan with the father for her son OP answer. My lawyer says that other than creating a graduated visitation plan based on the fact that my son doesn't know this man, the fact that he hasn't been involved in his child's life for the last three years won't mean much to the court. Their ultimate goal is for a child to have two parents. I screwed myself over by not naming him as the father at birth or trying to establish paternity in any way. Had I done that, and he fought it, neglected to pay court-ordered child support, etc., then we could have a better case as far as abandonment goes. He is putting in the effort to establish paternity now, is willing to pay child support, so he says, and is presumably going to tell the court he wants to see his kid, and this is going to reflect positively for him, despite not being involved for three years. New update. Since everyone got mad at me for posting a recap of my situation in my previous posts, I won't even go there. If you're interested in the backstory, you can read my previous posts. All I will say is that I have a three-year-old son who was conceived in an affair I had with a married man. After initially making me promise to not contact him, to not name him as the father, and to not request child support, my child's father has been pursuing involvement in our son's life over the last several months. He lives states away and most recently he showed up at my house to try to convince me to work things out directly with him. Since the last time I posted, we've recently had a mediation session and he's met our son twice. At this time, he will have supervised visitation with me present. Because he lives states away, he is required to come here to see our son. It will not be on a weekly basis due to the travel. He will see him during two weeks of the month, two times each week, for a total of four visits a month plus two video calls a month. This will last for six months. The next step will be for him to continue that schedule, but to have unsupervised visitation during which he cannot remove him from the area, for another six months. After a year, we agreed to have another mediation session to determine next steps, with the goal, his goal, of being able to have my son at his home for short overnights. I'm not even ready to discuss that. He's already suggesting I can come for the first few times. I don't like the sound of it at all. We also have the option to request another mediation before one year and something tells me he's going to pull that. I also have an order for child support. While he is in agreement with paying child support, it will have to work through the court system before becoming official and for me to start getting the regular payment. He wrote me a large check in the meantime. I was hesitant to accept it. Not that I don't think my son deserves it, but now I'm just always worried I'll say or do the wrong thing legally, completely unknowingly, and shoot myself in the foot. Like, am I obligating myself and my son to anything by accepting this check? Can he somehow spin this against me? Of course he was not in favor of the six-month of six-month plan, and while he does understand that my son should not just go off with a stranger upon first meeting him, he wishes we could speed it along a little more, but six months was what we were able to agree on. He wanted to fly us both to where he lives so he could spend a week or two getting to know our son, but I don't feel that's appropriate at this time. Perhaps in a few months, or around the holidays, depending on how things are going, it would be too much too soon. 
The initial two meetings went pretty much just as I thought they would. My son is extremely shy. He wanted to hide behind me most of the time. Then when he would venture out from behind me, as soon as his dad would say anything to him, he would scurry back behind me and just stare at his dad blankly without saying anything. He came out of his shell a little bit however he has still not said a single word to his dad. He just pretends like his dad isn't there and only talks to me. I will say that his dad is being patient and understanding as far as that goes. If he's frustrated, he's not showing it. He did suggest that maybe our son needs to get out more, go to daycare more of even preschool, instead of spending so much time with me and my parents. He's very delighted with how much our son looks like him and how much he favors him over me. The one thing that did bother me is that I already told him I wanted to be very careful and mindful of how we informed our son, this little barely three-year-old boy, that this man complete stranger is his dad. He said, sure, yeah. Then, at the first meeting, he introduced himself as dad. Since then, I've been trying to help my son understand. Like, you know how your grandpa is my daddy. This guy is your daddy. It's so surreal to me that any of this is happening. I feel like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm waiting for something to blow up in my face. Now it's just working on accepting our new reality. All of this change is hard and confusing for my son, and it's hard for me. Unless he really fucks up. I'm looking at eventually shared times with my son spending school breaks and holidays at his dad's house, hours and hours away in another state. It won't happen tomorrow, but it will happen in the most likely reality. I just hope he stays committed. If he can be a good dad to my child, then my child deserves that. No matter how sad sharing him makes me. If he breaks my son's heart, that'll be another story, and I won't accept that so readily. Relevant comments OP on the times when her son has to go visit his father and what the courts are deciding on. OP answer, they haven't ordered him to visit his father in his state, but eventually, that will probably happen. Talking elementary school age. Worldly Promise 675. I hope it all works out as well as it can given the circumstances. Your son and his well-being is definitely top priority. The baby daddy seems really pushy and doesn't like boundaries, so it does not seem he's changed much. AAP answer, he's used to getting his way. I'm doing my best to not just roll over but also learn to compromise. Imalela, are you concerned that he may also try to push the idea of reconciling romantically? It sounds like you are focused on your son and he's focused on getting his way. OP answer, I don't know. He hasn't really given me that impression. He's given me compliments. He's tried reminding me of some of the good times we had together. But I see that as all part of his schmoozing to just get me to do what he wants, not to get back together with me. OP on getting a therapist for her son. OP answer. Yes, I'm working on finding a therapist for him. I realize I should have started that process before this all went into action. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you. I fell in love with a married man while engaged and now I'm struggling to rebuild my relationship with my fiance. I fell in love with a married man while I was engaged to my fiance of six years. Now I regret it and want to make things right with my fiance. We've been together for six years, but in our third year, I cheated on him with someone who is a close family friend. I had started taking him for granted and it became easy to cheat because I didn't value the relationship. He broke up with me and we were split for months and the times I was single I realized he is a great beef. I begged for him back and he took me back but I had to promise to never speak to the guy again. I'm happy to say I never cheated since then and haven't been tempted at all. I understand how great of a partner I have. That being said, the guy I cheated on was a close family friend and recently I rekindled our friendship behind his back. Nothing romantic. Have you ever met someone who is a terrible partner but a great friend? That's him. I hated the fact that I let a stupid mishap ruin our friendship. My fiancé found out and was angry. I apologized and we talked and he needed space. He sent me a text of his demands to continue the relationship and I copied and pasted it. His text. After doing some thinking, I can't trust you. Whether it was platonic or not, this is the second time that I know of where I have violated my trust. The hardest part isn't this, but now I have to wonder how many times have you violated my trust or done something behind my back that I just don't know about. You claim this is it, but how can I believe you? I love you and want to work on this relationship, but it's going to require a lot from you. We are postponing our wedding indefinitely. When we first got back together, it took 10 months before I felt secure in the relationship again. I have no idea how long it will take to feel secure again. Eli, I changed the name, will be blocked on everything, and you're to never speak to him again. This now includes family events. If you know he will be there, do not attend. If you didn't know he attends, you are to ignore him. I have unrestricted access to phones, social media, emails, etc. Every password I want to know for any device you have. No hanging out with male friends alone. You are to be home by one if you do go out with your homegirls. There will be more, but these are my demands and they aren't up for discussion. If you aren't willing to do it, then the relationship is over. Take your time to think about it.
End of text, I called him, but he said he's not arguing with me about it and won't call him back until I decide what I want to do. I feel that this is extremely harsh considering the fact I didn't cheat this time. Ever since we got back together, I never cheated on him. OP believes that the punishment is too far. I think I was wrong. But I feel that the punishment doesn't fit the crime. I made a horrible mistake years ago. Being friends with someone doesn't equal sign cheating. Even though I was wrong for going behind his back, OP is convinced to follow her BF's rules. Okay, I'll do it. I just needed to make sure he wasn't going too far, but if this is what it takes to rebuild his trust. When commenters say that OP is on her way to cheat on her BF again, she claims you don't think I'll follow his rules. Good thing I don't let people tell me what I can't do. I'm going to be laughing when we work through this, get married, and have kids. Update 1, we had a really great conversation and he was vulnerable and said it made him feel like I didn't value him. He was crying and it really hurt me to see the pain I caused him. He told me that please let's not go forward with this unless I can promise that I won't go behind his back again because he can't go through this pain again. I told him that I promise I will never hurt him again and will always be honest and upfront with him now. We talked about the rules and he said they will be temporary and will be adjusted when we go to couples therapy. Now it's time to put in the work to repair the relationship. I know it will be a lot of work, but I'm prepared. Update 2, so next month I'll get married this fall. I was with an amazing guy and we worked through a lot of issues together. I thought I loved him and I think I still do but not in love with him. About three months ago at my job, we got a new co-worker who is very handsome and extremely attractive. I mean, I have never been so physically attracted to someone in my life. We started to deepen our friendship but romantic feelings came. I repressed mine but to my surprise he confessed his feelings to me as well. I told him we gotta think about our spouses but our feelings continue to grow. He told me he stopped being affectionate with his wife because he feels like he is cheating on me when he does that. He only wants to be affectionate with me. I've started doing the same thing and haven't been intimate with my partner. The big thing is a lot of people will be hurt when this comes out. He can't divorce his wife right away because of finances but he will as soon as possible. I have to call off the wedding but I really don't want to hurt my current fiance. When asked about her previous infidelity, OP says, I have cheated before and I'm starting to realize it's because I didn't understand being in love. With the guy I'm seeing, we both aren't romantic with our current partners. I don't want to be with anyone but him. Also, he's going to divorce his wife. We have a plan for when his finances get straight. How is she justifying this affair? This is completely different. The first time I cheated was because I was selfish. This time it was because I fell in love with someone else. I didn't choose this. No one picks who they love. This whole experience has taught me how complex love is and that I've never been in love before. This is so hard on OP, that's not fair. I didn't want any of this to happen. It breaks my heart that I'm going to have to call off the wedding, but he's a great guy and I'm certain he will find someone else. I wish I loved him or didn't fall in love with someone else. Because life is more complicated than that. I don't want to hurt him and have been thinking, oh, the best way to tell him. You guys act like this doesn't hurt for me too. You guys are not being understanding or empathetic. When commenters tell OP she's gullible about the married guy, she keeps emphasizing, I'm going to tell my fiancé, but we can't tell the other guy's wife yet. He's trying to get his finances in order first. Update 3, I took everyone's advice and decided to end things with my fiancé. This was the hardest thing I had to do in my life. I know you guys think I'm a terrible person, but this is an unimaginable situation to find yourself in. I want everyone to know how much this hurts. I really wish I didn't fall in love with someone else. I wish I could make myself fall in love with my fiancé, but I can't. It took me so long to accept this. I hope you guys can understand that I can't convey this enough that I care about my ex-fiancé. I know this will be best for both of us, even though it's hard right now. When asked if Ope told her ex-fiancé the truth, she says, I didn't lie. I told him the truth, that I fell in love with someone else. I told him I still care about him. I keep telling you all that I care about him and would never use him as backup. He's a great guy and there's a woman out there who will love him and be lucky to have him. There's no reason we both can't be happy. When commenters tell OOP that there is no way the married man is going to leave his wife for her, she says, he is going to divorce his wife. Unfortunately, divorce is extremely complicated, but he said he will keep me updated. It's not just finances, but a lot of other legal stuff. Since I wasn't married yet, it was easy to end things. For him, it's a lot more complicated than that. When commenters continue to call Ope gullible, she says, No, I was very clear in our conversation today that I want this figured out by the end of the year. That's plenty of time for him to figure out finances and legal stuff. That way, by 2025, we can just focus on each other. Update 4. I realize I treated my fiancé horrible and received my karma. My coworker and his wife are getting a divorce because she found out he was cheating with multiple women. Plural, he's a disgusting animal. He lied to me and others pretending that we were the only ones. I ended things with him. 
I'm glad he's been exposed. Now, regarding my ex-fiancé, I've taken the time to reflect and realize he's actually my true love. I hate that I hurt him. I reached out again to him, but he said he will always love me, but he's done with me. That was painful to hear. I just can't get over what my coworker did in destroying multiple relationships, including mine. It's painful to see and experience. Edit. I wasn't clear, but I take responsibility for my actions. Just because I'm condemning his disgusting and manipulative behavior doesn't mean I'm justifying my actions. My actions were horrible, but I've learned from them. Now to the next story, story two. My love for my husband has been gradually dying since he forced me to choose between an open marriage and divorce. My husband, Leo, 34, and I, 30, have been together for seven years, married for four of them. We don't have any kids and we don't intend to. Two years ago, Leo asked me for an open marriage. I was devastated at the time. I couldn't understand why he didn't just want me. I couldn't even comprehend the idea of sharing him either. He gave me the same song and dance a lot of men give their spouses, swore up and down that he loved me. I just wasn't fulfilling his needs. He needed more than what I could give. It was just to spice up our life. It was just sex, etc. I did ask if there was someone else. He said no. To this day, I'm still not sure if I believed him. But at the time, I was angry and hurt and said no. He pestered me to change my mind for a week before giving me an ultimatum. Open marriage or divorce. I chose an open marriage. I just couldn't bear the thought of him leaving me at the time. We have rules we can't bring any partners home. We have to get tested for STD every three months. One weekend out of the month must be left free for us time. Any money we spend on with our partners must come from our personal accounts. I didn't partake in the open marriage myself for the first three months. Leo obviously did right away. He seemed to be gone or out late almost all the time, but he always acted so happy and loving towards me while I felt like I was dying inside. It killed me to think he was sleeping with other women, and I felt so lonely and unattractive and not good enough. I told my sister, Katie, 26F, and a few close friends everything. Katie told me to just play his game and be part of the open marriage, too. If he can sleep around, so could I. I honestly didn't have much confidence in myself at the time. I'm a bit overweight, and I've never considered myself conventionally pretty. I was afraid this would just humiliate me further. Katie and my best friend Jesse, 30F, set up my online dating profiles for me. I got so many matches that it was overwhelming. When I told Leo he was surprised, but told me to do whatever I thought was best. Jesse helped me choose my first date, and I actually had a great time. He didn't pressure me for sex and took me out to drinks and dinner. We did have sex eventually, but it was all just casual, and we didn't see each other after a couple months of casual dating. That first guy really made me feel more confident in myself, so I kept going on dates with men. A lot of them wanted to treat me, so I didn't have to spend much of my own money. Not only that, but some of the men have given me the best sex I've ever had in my life, almost like the kind of sex you read in romance novels. It's been amazing. I am currently seeing two different men, alongside Leo. One, Mark, 38M, is more of a steady boyfriend I've been with for about six months, and the one, Stephen, 25M, is very casual, mostly just hanging out and sex. They know about my open marriage, other relationships, and are fine with it. My husband has not been so lucky. In the beginning, he definitely was. He was always out and about and didn't seem to care even when I started dating too. But now he just complains a lot and hasn't been going out much. He whines about how he's usually the one spending money. A lot of the women he tries to be with want an emotional connection before sex. He often wants to be with younger women, but they want younger men. He's also been upset that I go out with random guys so often while he's at home alone all the time. He hasn't asked to close the marriage yet, but I feel like he will soon. He keeps saying he misses us and wants to spend more time together. He tried to initiate sex a lot more too. He wants to go on dates and go on vacations and all that stuff more and more, and he gets upset when I tell him I can't because I've already scheduled to do stuff with my partners. Mostly Mark. Honestly, I don't think I love Leo anymore. I care about him, but I just don't love him. I'm not saying I love Mark or Steven, but I honestly feel closer to Mark nowadays than I do Leo. Mark makes me feel comfortable and safe, and I love spending time with him more than my own husband. Steven is funny and sweet and really good at sex. Katie and Jesse have been wanting me to divorce for a year now, but I was afraid of hurting him and thought I still loved him. But I think my love for him died when he asked for this open marriage in the first place. Seeing him get all pissy about it now just because he's not benefiting from it is also a turnoff for me too. But I don't know if divorce is the best option. I still care about him and I still don't want to hurt him. Maybe if he finally asks to close the marriage, we can talk about it then. Relevant comments. Comment 1. Divorce. You're happier without him. He would only want to close the marriage because he can't get laid, not that he only loves you. OP. We've just been together for so long that the idea of him not being there feels weird. 
which sounds stupid since I have two other partners so it's not like I'll be lonely. But Leo was a part of my life for so long that for him to not be there just doesn't feel right. But you're probably right. OP on her husband dismissing her feelings regarding the open marriage. OP. I really do think Leo does love me, in his own way. Even when he was more active in the open marriage, he still made time for me and still did a lot with him. For me. But you're probably right on the divorce. Comment 2. Part of the issue is the main relationship is supposed to be the important one. So the whole one weekend a month for us time wasn't enough. OP, I actually did argue that in the beginning, but he insisted that he needed to keep his weekends free. He did spend a lot of time at home during the weekdays, so in his mind, that made up for it. Comment 3. What if he finds evidence of your open marriage and frames you as a cheater, and then brings you to the cleaners? At this point, I wouldn't trust Leo. What you're experiencing is normalcy, you're used to his presence in your life. But how long are you going to live like this? OP. Jesse had the same train of thought of you and actually took screenshots of his dating profiles during the beginning of the open marriage. She also told me to save screenshots of any texts we had about the open marriage. I don't think Leo would do that but I also didn't think he'd ever ask for an open marriage, so what do I know? Update 1. Hi everyone. I got so many comments and messages on my last post, which got deleted for some reason, that I was a bit overwhelmed, especially when a lot of you kept saying the same thing. Divorce. 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 But the thing is, I think a part of me still loves my husband. I know in my last post that I didn't think I loved him anymore, but I can't just forget about the things that I do love. I love when he sings in the shower. I love when he laughs so hard he snorts. I love when he kisses my forehead when I've had a bad day. I love when he holds my hand when he watch TV together. Leo has done a lot of shitty things, but he really isn't the big asshole people think. Maybe that was my fault. But even if I do still love him, I'm not in love with him anymore. I don't think I have been for a while. I care about him, a part of me does still love him, but you all were right. I should have just divorced him when he gave me the ultimatum in the first place. This past Saturday, we had the big talk. I initiated it, but he didn't seem too surprised. I just told him that I noticed he didn't seem to like me going out with Mark or Stephen, and asked if there was a problem. He said there was. But he didn't ask me to close the marriage. He just asked me if I still loved him. I said something like, not like I used to. He broke down crying, which made me cry. I guess he had known for a while that I wasn't in love anymore, but he had hoped he could win me back if he funneled all of his energy into me. I was honest and told him that during those first three months of our open marriage, I think my love for him died and I just couldn't get it back. I did tell him that I still cared about him and that I did love him, but it's not the same as it was. He asked if I loved Mark or Steven and I said no. I like being with them and I care about them a lot, but I can't say I'm in love with either of them. I also finally asked him why he wanted the open marriage in the first place. A lot of you in the comments said he already had someone lined up and you were right. He had someone at work he was interested in and she wanted him too. The open marriage was just to get permission. He honestly never expected me to also get my own partners because of how unconfident I was. But he didn't want to stop me either because he thought nothing would come of it. He didn't really like me seeing other men, but he knew it wouldn't have been fair to tell me no when I gave him permission first. I guess Mark and Steven made him insecure because I was spending so much time with them on a regular basis. The open marriage was just sex on the side for him. He only did hookups and they never lasted long. He genuinely always just loved me but he thought I was falling in love with my partners and he was losing me and wanted to win me back. We cried a lot and talked a lot. We've decided to get a divorce. Since the house is in his name, I'm going to move out and live with Katie for a while. He told me I didn't have to and I could stay until the divorce was finalized, but I just can't. It's too hard to even look at him sometimes. I don't know how I feel, to be honest. I thought I would be relieved or sad, but I'm just tired. I wish I could have been like you all wanted me to be clapping back or being sarcastic and snarky or rubbing it in his face, but I don't feel like I've won anything. I just feel lost. Relevant comments comment when I'm wondering if maybe the other woman ended it so now he was back to what he was comfortable with, his wife. He went and had his fun and when that died out, he was not left with a wife waiting for him at home. AP and his coworker were only sleeping together for maybe a month. She fulfilled his kinks that I never liked indulging in. That's why he was with most of his partners, because I wasn't interested in his kinks. Comment 2. He stepped out of this marriage first and tried to have his cake and eat it too. The thing with open marriages is that you can never count on how emotions will change. Sex is a very intimate action and many people will develop emotional connections. Those connections come at a price. He placed a bet and he lost. At least he's man enough to acknowledge it and own up to it. There is no easy answer. OP. I wish you healing OP. Thank you. Leo just thought the open marriage would be a way for him to get all of his kinks he couldn't do with me.
because I wasn't into it. He knew how unconfident I was, which wasn't because of him. A lot of people seem to think that he eroded my self-esteem, but he didn't. We can thank my mother for that. But that's a whole other kin of worms, so he never expected me to partake in the open marriage either. Comment 3 So he never expected me to partake in the open marriage either. So basically while he asked for a mutually open marriage, he expected it to be only his side open and then got hurt that reality didn't meet his expectations. OP, Leo admitted that he did only expect his side to be open. He was never going to stop me from opening my side. But like I said, he didn't think I would. TBH, I don't think I would have either if it wasn't for Jesse and Katie pushing me and making profiles for me. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.